Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. We recently made an Instagram post with a picture of a small splint that we like to use for a prolonged passive IP flexion stretch. Um, we got great response out of that, so we wanted to show you how to make that today. So really all you need um, for that is just a small piece of splint material, um, a thick rubber band. Uh, we get these from uh, Performance Health. I'm sure many places have these. So these are the color-coded latex free rubber bands. They come in, you know, different colors like uh, yellow, red, green, blue, uh, your typical colors there. Green is usually a good size to um, have enough surface area to kind of grab onto that distal phalanx to pull that into a stretch. Need a hole punch, need some super glue, and some form of a hook. These are actually bra hooks. We'll, we'll get a close-up shot of that. And I like to use some tweezers so I don't get glue on my hands. So, I'm going to throw this splint material in the splint pan, let that warm up for just a little bit. Alright, so, grab our small piece of splint material out of the splint pan. I've already rounded the edges, um, just so the video will go a little quicker. Literally just going to kind of make it in a U-shape around the uh, proximal phalanx of the finger. Just going to let that harden up, uh, make sure it's... You know, I like having it uh, below the PIP joint crease, but also not down here in the web space, so it's not going to irritate your patients. So, you know, cut this a little smaller if you need to. After that hardens up, we'll go ahead and put our hooks on there and go from there. All right, so now that your splint has uh, firmed and hardened completely, um, we're going to go ahead and I like heating the area that we're going to stick um, the bra hook to um, just a little bit. So we'll take our super glue, put it right in that area. And again, I like using these tweezers just to keep from getting glue all over my fingers. One thing you want to make sure of when you're applying your um, your hook onto the splint is make sure this little point right here is facing away from the opening of the splint because your rubber band is going to be um, hooking to that. Okay, so after you put your hook in the right spot, we've got it in the right direction. I usually like taking a little bit more super glue um, just to make sure that's not going to come off because you are going to be having quite a bit of pressure um, especially if you're working with a pretty stiff joint. So I usually add a little more super glue to that to that hook and make sure it's all the way around um, the hook and the and the splint so that it's not going to come off. We have at times if we were out of a hook in the clinic, we've just gotten a little creative and used a little piece of splint material or just created like a little hook of the splint um, right here but we found that this usually just works best for us so that's what we stuck with okay so we went ahead and put the hook on the other side of our splint also so we've got that on both sides the super glue is drying right now um, so while that's drying you can go ahead and take your um, thick rubber band all right so we'll just take some scissors and cut that and um, of course we're not going to need one this long so you can just kind of gauge uh, what size you'll need according to the size of your patient's finger or how stiff they are and another thing to note um, with this splint this splint will not work um, with someone that has very limited DIP flexion because you have to have um, the rubber band has to be able to get a good grasp on that to pull you into IP flexion all right, so after you have a small section of your rubber band, go ahead and grab your hole punch, and we're going to start um, punching holes in the rubber band. So, you know, make sure you don't start at the very end of it just because you want a little extra um, piece here. Get that in closer so you can see that. So, again, don't start, don't start near the tip because you want a little bit of extra rubber band there um, for, to apply some good stretch to that. Um, I'm actually going to go a little bigger on the hole just so it'll fit around our hooks a little better. Okay. 
All right, so something like that's uh, going to be a little better and going to fit a little better. So, all right, so obviously you want this to be adjustable, so we're going to make quite a few holes down the side of this rubber band, and you're going to do that on each side. You'll have a better idea once you put this on your patient um, how many holes to do or um, where to start and where to stop at. All right, so cut our last hole on the opposite side. So now we've got something that looks kind of like this. So it will be adjustable um, for your patient on each side. So as soon as your hooks uh, and your super glue have completely dried and stuck on there, then you can apply this to your patient and go ahead and teach them how to, how to use this splint at home. All right, so after everything has dried, um, usually when I show, a, show this to a patient, I go ahead and put one end on and I just tell them to, to leave that end alone. They don't really have to mess with that one. Um, but I did put some extra holes here just in case. All right, so we'll go ahead and slip this on our patient. And as you can see, we've gotten, um, let's move, Dylan, let's move your ring finger down. So, um, so we've already gotten this hook here. So then we're going to have the patient um, bend what they can or they can take it, um, or you can take it with your other hand and bend passively. Okay. And then again, take, um, take what's left here and kind of wrap that around and you're going to pull that as tight as they can comfortably tolerate and you can hook that on whatever hole gives them a very good stretch but also a comfortable stretch that they could tolerate um, for some period of time. And you have to, with this thicker green rubber band, you have to make sure that that uh, hook is kind of pointed up enough so that it can so that it can latch on there. So this one's fine. If it was for a patient, I would probably take that hook and kind of bend it up just a little bit more um, so that they wouldn't have that much trouble getting it hooked. So there you go. All right, so again, that's a pretty quick and easy splint. It's great to send home with your patient so that they can be performing this at home. Because again, uh, you know, a lot of times in clinic, you're stretching them a few times a week. But then when they go home, they're not stretching enough at all. So again, good thing to send home with them. Hey guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. We hope you learned something today and that this was helpful to you in some way. So you know our goal for this channel, the upper hand, is to give you guys the upper hand as you seek to better understand conditions of the upper extremity and just all topics related to occupational therapy in general. So please take a second out of your day, make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel so that you can be sure that you're going to see all of our upcoming videos. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time.